he comes, here he comes. There's the trumpets, there's the drums, here he comes. Hop along, Cassidy. Saddle pal Red Connors and I were riding deep in the heart of the Sierra Blanca country on a strange mission. A week ago, the assistant chief for the Bureau of Indian Affairs had sent for me. And in his office in Santa Fe, New Mexico... And somewhere in this thousand square mile area is the place the Indians call the land of the black waters that burn. Only Chief Tallhorse has the map with the exact location said to be on a bracelet that's handed down from father to son. You mean you brought Hoppy and me all the way from Twin Rivers just to tell us this Indian bedtime story? Red, this is not just a legend. There's a lot of evidence in the museums that prove that the Comanches knew of the existence of oil long before the white man came west. Chief Tallhorse has admitted he has the map, but he refuses to give it up. Says the tradition of his tribe that uh, only evil can come from the black waters. Oh, Indians are always worrying about ghosts or something. They had a right to worry about the waters in those days, Red. The animals got stuck in the oil, and when the braves went after them, they got stuck too and went under. Well, Mr. Bradley, now that I've given Red his uh, history lesson, what is it you want me to do? I want to get that map from Chief Tallhorse. If anyone can get it, I know you can. Why is it so important all of a sudden? That land is due to be open for homesteading 10 days from today. If anyone discovers oil after that date, the Indians won't get a penny's worth of it. And if it's discovered before then? I have the promise of the government that the Indians will get 25% of all the oil taken from that ground. I don't know. The chief has always been pretty set in these ideas. Hoppy, you know my feeling toward the Indians. You know I've always tried to help them. Will you help me? Will the government put their promise to the Indians in writing? I have it right here. That's good. We'll leave for Sierra Blanca Reservation tonight. Thank you ever so much. Good luck to you. And so Red and I rode south and west. Red, will you take the horses over to the livery stable? stay at the reservation. No, oh, it's too late to go calling on friends now. I thought we'd spend the night here. Tomorrow I'll take you out there and you're going to meet one of the finest old gentlemen I've ever known. The last of the Comanche chiefs. Ooh, he big chief half powwow with he big pale face red Connors. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You try that tomorrow, you'll liable to get scalped by an Indian who speaks better English than you do. Come on, I'm sleepy. <laughs> the street to man down. Help! Help! It was Chief Tallhorse. He's been shot in the back. How did it happen? I don't know. Well, he's still alive. Get a doctor. The nearest doctor's out on the reservation. Red, get a buckboard. We'll get him out to the reservation to the doctor. Hurry it up, will you? What happened, Bernard? Well, the chief had been to dinner with Betty and me. I just said goodnight to him at the door when I heard the shot and the chief cry out. Did you see anyone? My brother's blind. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, the chief's shirt is powder burned. He must have been shot from close range. Did you see anyone running away? I was in the back room. Hurry up with that buckboard! Maybe I better take him off to the reservation, mister. I'm Bill Cassidy, a friend of his. You better stay here and try to find out who shot him. You bet I will. He's a friend of mine, too. All right, driver, let's get out of here. Come on.
here? I'm the doctor. I have Chief Tallhorse in the buckboard. He's been shot. Dad! We'll put him on the couch, Mr. Cassidy. Right. Easy. Get me some boiling water from the kitchen. It's been a long time since you've seen me, Johnny Tallhorse. How did you remember my name? It has indeed been a long time. Before I was sent to the white man's school. But one doesn't forget the name or the face of the man who helped his father make a lasting peace with his white brothers. Can Here. I help you there? Yes. Just hold him still. I'll cut his shirt. It was nearly noon of the next day when Johnny finally pronounced his father out of danger. The chief had been lucky. The bullet had just missed his heart. Hoppy. Yeah? My son and I are both grateful to you. Getting me here in time, Frank Cassidy. Thank you, Chief. You feel better now? Fine. My people are tough. It takes more than one bullet to kill a Comanche. <laughs> what brings you to Sierra Blanca? Is it all right if I talk with you? Well, go ahead. It'll probably do him good. Chief, I'm here on a mission that may bring great prosperity to all your people in the years to come. The chief and I talked for several hours. He asked many questions, mainly about the government's promise to protect his people. I showed him the paper Bradley had given me. How long is this powwow going to last? My people are never in a hurry when there's something important to be considered. You think Hoppy can convince him? <laughs> I think he could convince my father that black is white. So I have told you the whole story, chief. That's as far as I can go. I know you to be a man of truth, friend Cassidy. I will give you the map. The white men can drill for the black waters that burn. On the bracelet on my right wrist is engraved the map. Take it with my blessing. On your wrist. You must have taken it off. When I was 21 years old, my father placed the bracelet on my wrist. From that day to this, it had never left my arm. He had it on when he left yesterday afternoon, Hoppy. He did? Now I think I know why you were shot last night. Somebody beside your father must know that that bracelet is the map to the oil land. But who could read it outside of a Comanche chief? Well, it may take time, but anyone who's made a study of Comanche symbols might eventually work it out. Hey, Johnny, what do you know about Turner and his sister? What kind of people are they? Where did they come from? Well, Betty came out here a short time ago with a blind brother and opened up a millinery shop. She's been very kind to the children on the reservation. As a matter of fact, that's why Father went in to see her yesterday to thank her for some clothes she made for them. <laughs> I'm afraid you're way wide of the mark there, Hoppy. Ah, uh, maybe. Did she make the first move to meet you and your father? Well, come to think of it, she did. She always seemed very much interested in Comanche folklore. Did she ever mention the bracelet your father wore? She always admired it as a fine piece of primitive art. She did, huh? I think I'll go into town and have a talk with Miss Betty Turner. Surely you don't suspect her of having anything to do with this. Johnny, you never can tell what some people might do, especially when the stakes are high. Come on, Red. Let's go into town.
all, Miss Turner. I want to thank you for the use of the blanket. And I'm sure you'll be glad to know that the chief is going to live. I'm so glad to hear that. Blaine. Mr. Casty says that the chief is going to be all right. Isn't that wonderful news? Wonderful. In a few weeks, he'll be just as good as new. Well, our thanks to you, Mr. Casty, for getting him to the doctor in time. Betty and I have become very fond of the old gentleman. I don't remember having seen you before. Do you belong in this district? Oh, no. We're from the Twin Rivers country. We just came down here to buy some Indian cattle. Well, we'd better go if we want to look at that herd. Goodbye. Oh, uh, by the way, the chief seems to think he lost a bracelet of some kind here in town last night. Did you hear anyone say they found it? No, I, I didn't. Was it valuable? No, I don't think so. It's probably just one of those old things the older Indians wear. If I hear anything, I'll let the chief know. I wouldn't worry about it. He'll remember where he put it when his mind clears up. Goodbye. Thanks for coming in, Mr. Cassidy. Goodbye. You sure learned a lot of nothing in there. I wouldn't say that. You know, Hoppy, the longer I hang around you, the less I know what's in your mind. That goes two ways double. Come on. Where are we headed for? A telegraph office. I want to get a message off to Bradley in Santa Fe. What about? I want some information about a blind man who can write. What are you talking about, Hoppy? I bet that Blaine Turner can see as good as I can. What makes you think so? He was working on those maps in the living room table. He had ink stains all over his fingers. I didn't see any. I did. You did? I sent my message asking if the Bureau of Indian Affairs knew anything of a woman who called herself Betty Turner. And an hour later, I received a reply. What did it say? Yeah, really. Betty Turner, formerly a secretary in this office. Stop. Well, what are you stopping for? Read the rest of well, it. It said stop. Well, that's just a period. Oh, sure. Stop. Her brother, Blaine Turner, considered an authority on Indian folklore. Bradley. Well, I'll be darned. Looks like we hit on something, huh? Well, that dirty sneak. What are we going to do now? Get the bracelet back? I wish it was that simple. We can't even prove that they've got it. Come on, let's get back to the reservation. I got an idea that might work. If anyone else had told me this story, I would not have believed them. You know something else, Chief? I believe Blaine Turner shot you just to get that bracelet. <laughs> but we still have to prove it. Hmm. Chief, do you have another bracelet that looks anything like the map bracelet? We have several. All right, Johnny, get them out of the cabinet. Yeah. This one has the same symbols and markings as the ones on the map bracelet. That's good. We'll just put it on the chief's pillow here for a while. I don't understand, Hoppy. I'm just baiting a trap. I'll explain later. Well, Red, here we go again. Back to town. Well, I'm getting tired of just riding back and forth. Don't worry. This time you'll have plenty to do. See you later. Since Cassidy and me has finished our business down here and are heading home, I thought it might be nice if I bought a hat to take home to my sister. I'd be glad to help you pick one out for her. What is her coloring? Is she tall or short or...? She's about my size. I'd say she's tall. Is she a blonde or brunette? Uh, I mean, what does she look like? She's like me. Well, she's a little prettier. Would you mind stepping over this way? 
How's this one? That's right, nice. No. Let's try that other one. How's this? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one. Only, you, could you could you sow some more flowers on it? My sister just loves flowers. I'll do it right away. Chief Tollhorse had a mighty narrow escape. He's going to be laid up in bed a long time. My brother and I will have to get out to see him one of these days. Does anyone have any idea who shot him? Cassidy figures it might have been someone who had a feud with the chief in the old days. That's a possibility. Red was playing the dumb, talkative numbskull perfectly, and it looked like Betty was falling for it. Funny thing about that bracelet that disappeared. What's funny about it? The chief told us that it had something to do with a map or something, but it wasn't any good without the other one. What other one? The other bracelet the chief has. Somehow it, it's no good without the other one to complete the map. Leastways, that's the way I understood it. That sounds very interesting and exciting. Have you seen this other bracelet? Yep. Chief keeps it under his pillow. The right pretty thing. Oh, it's a little bracelet about this big. Oh, it's got a lot of doodads, tracings, and marks on it. Some of those old Indian bracelets are beautiful. I'll have to ask the chief to show it to me someday. There. That does it. Are you ready to leave for Twin Rivers? Yep. Well, how much is it? Eight dollars. For that little hat? I only paid six for mine. Women's hats are more expensive. Pay the lady. Your sister's going to love that hat. It's been a pleasure meeting you and Red, Mr. Cassidy. Thank you. Well, come on. we got a lot of riding to do before dark. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> circled around the town and hid out where we could watch the road to the reservation. Betty and her brother hadn't wasted any time getting underway. Red and I cut across the hills and headed for the reservation. Glad to hear that you're going to be all right. I brought you some things to eat. Thank you for coming. How does it happen that you're here all alone? Only until nightfall. Johnny had to ride to the lower reservation as a sick child. Here, let me make you more comfortable. Thank you. There, that should be better. Now you have both bracelets. Evil woman, the tongue of a snake. This time, make sure. Drop your gun, Turner. All right, Red, search him. Walked right into it, didn't you? I should have known anyone as ugly as you are couldn't have a sister. Here it is. Put it in your pocket. All right, get moving, you two. I'm taking you down to the lower reservation to await trial. Hold it, Cassidy. They're not taking anybody anywhere. So you're in on this, too, huh? There are smart people in this world beside you. When I heard your name last night, it rang a bell. 
So I began checking up, and I found out you had the right to act as U.S. Marshal. Right after you told me you were coming out here, I found out he sent a telegram asking about you. So I took no chances. Well, now that they all know what's what, we'll have to get rid of them. I figure we might have to. Go get your ropes. And the dynamite and fuse out of my saddlebag. All right, inside. The five-minute fuse the sheriff had set was only seconds away from the dynamite. my bag on the table. If we could only get it. Well, we can try. Don't hurry and get those ropes cut, Fred. I'm afraid your sister isn't going to get her hat. Right now, I ain't worrying about my sister's hat. A little more, a little more. down the lower reservation get a posse ready. I'll be all right, my son. Ride with our friends. It is my wish. It had taken but a short time for the Indian agent to gather some trusted men and we headed for town. the agent go to the side door. Johnny, you go to the back window. You two stay in front. Come on. The second bracelet was just a trick to lure us into tipping our hands. This bracelet gave me all the information I needed. Now, Betty and I will each file on a homestead right here. Sheriff, you and your men can file on the surrounding sites. Take a look at these sites first. Get your hands up. House is surrounded. All right, get over there. I'll just take all this stuff along and save the engineers a lot of trouble. Come on, get on your feet. Get out of here. It'll be a long walk to the jail I'm taking you to. Well, Chief, the engineers have turned in their report and the drillers are ready to go to work. Soon your tribe will prosper as never before. Thank you, Frank Cassidy. I shall see to it that the money is wisely spent. I'm sure you will. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye, Johnny. Bobby. Well, Red, this time we're heading for home. Okay, Hoppy. Yeah? What am I going to do with this hat? I paid eight dollars for it. Give it to your sister. Oh, you know I ain't got no sister. Well, maybe you will have a sister. Well, how am I ever going to have a sister? I haven't even got a father and mother. Well, just to save any argument, I'll give you the eight dollars. Oh, you keep it. I've had eight dollars worth of excitement out of it. <laughs> Here. There's a present for you, Maggie Two Feet. Hop along, Cassidy. Hop 
Babylon Cassidy, he'll return soon again. There's no use to say goodbye until then. There's the drums, here he comes. Hop along, Cassidy, here he comes. Fred and I were riding home from a business trip across the border. To reach our ranch, the Bar 20, we had to pass through a number of Mexican villages. Apocado was one of the smallest settlements, yet in its colorless, sleepy way, it fascinated me. Get that wagon out of here. Had Topper been a less intelligent horse, I couldn't have avoided riding her down. Fortunately, the woman was unhurt, and I helped her to her feet. She apologized for stepping in front of us. She said she had heard us and the wagon and became confused. I looked at her more closely, and suddenly the reason why she had failed to see us became clear. Senora Soledad was blind. Muchas gracias, senores. You have been kind to a blind lady. I hope because of me you have not too long delayed your journey. Oh, we weren't going any place in particular, were we, Red? Oh. Leastways, we weren't in any hurry. <laughs> oh, bueno. Then you can drink a cup of coffee, perhaps, see? Oh, you're eh? very kind, oh, but, but that would put you to too much trouble. But it is already. Please. Could I help you, Sonora? Oh, no, gracias. Please sit down. It is four years now that I am blind. And one learns to get along. Uh, my man, Pedro Soledad, he is dead. And my son, Manuel, he is gone. So I manage for myself. Your boy, has he been gone long? See, seven months, senor. Seems to me he should have stayed with you. Oh, no, senor. He could not make enough money here. There is no work. In Rio Hermosa, he has good job. He did not like to leave me, but he, we need the money, senor. I'll help you with Thank you, senor. While I poured the coffee, Red and I learned that her son Manuel, for the first five months of his absence, had sent the senora money. Several weeks before, however, Manuel stopped writing and also stopped sending the money. Naturally, the good woman was worried. She wondered if perhaps the change had come about because of a girl Manuel had met in Rio Hermosa. All she knew about this girl was that her name was Carmencita Escobar and that she worked in a cantina. Well, it's been very pleasant, senora, but we must go if we hope to get to our ranch before dark. All pleasures must end, eh, senores? But you will visit me again when you ride through Apocato. We certainly will. Thank you very much. Oh, the nada. Hasta la vista. Oh, hasta muy pronto. You sure there's nothing more we can do for you before we go? Oh, no, gracias, senores. Gracias de todo. Y váyanse ustedes con Dios. Gracias, señora. Red seemed puzzled when I delayed our start for home. The fact was, I wondered about Manuel and why he had stopped writing to his blind mother. As I could think of no pressing reason to hurry home, I suggested to Red we devote a couple of days in checking the situation in Rio Hermosa. Red was pleased. He, too, wanted to ease the mind of Senora Soledad.
Carmesita. Vino. Why you gringos come here? Looking at you, ain't that a silly question? The vino. Tres pesos. Wait till we finish. You pay now. All right, don't get in the huff. By the way, whatever happened to that fellow that used to hang around you? What do you think? I know everybody's business. The customers come and they go. I don't keep track of them. You kept track of this one. His name was Manuel. Manuel Soledad or something like that. He went away someplace. I don't know where. Now give me the money. Sure. Ouch! Maybe <laughs> <laughs> hey. the little Spitfire is telling the truth. Yeah? Maybe she's not. We'll hang around just in case. Why you ask about this, Manuel? Friends of his. Then why don't you ask about him before? You've been in here many times since he went away. That's right, sweetheart. But we didn't know he was wanted for murder until today. He's in trouble, so we want to help him. If he is in trouble, he will have other friends he can trust. you hombres want? I'd like a tall glass of fizz water with a little uh, cherry syrup in it. We have beer, wine, and whiskey. That's all. No sarsaparilla? Are you making jokes? This is a place of business. What for you, senor? Information. About what? Are you Carmen Cita Escobar? What if I am? We hear that you might know the whereabouts of Manuel Soledad. It's important that we find Manuel, so I'd appreciate anything you can tell me about him, senorita. I can tell you nothing. He stayed in Rio Hermosa a few months, but five, six weeks ago, he went away. Where? Where'd he go? If you want to ask questions, find Manuel and ask him. What's your pitch, mister? The answer is none of your business. We're making it our business. Manuel was our friend. You don't strike me as the kind that have any friends. Oh, a smart alec, huh? Keep your hands off that hardware. Get out. Come on. Now, get. Get on your horses and get out of town. the horses here and walk back up to the cantina. We're not going in there again. No. But I'm gonna keep my eye on those two. I got a hunch they'll lead us to Manuel. I got a hunch you're asking for trouble. You see, Carmen Cita, I've talked to Manuel's mother. She's blind and alone and out caught up. She not only needs the little money that he's been sending her, but she's worried for fear something's happened to him because he's quit writing to her. She could sure use the money, too. Why don't you be a good girl and tell us where he is? You Americanos, you make obliged to fool me. How I know that is all you want from Manuel. I guess you'll just have to take our word for it, senorita. Your word. It's pretty obvious Manuel is in trouble, and I'd like to help him. 
But you'll have to help, too, by telling me where I can find him. Please. When Manuel left the Rio Hermosa, he went to the Rancho Diablo. Rancho Diablo? Where is that? It is in the hills, east. Six, seven miles, I think. Maybe you find him there. Gracias, senorita. Hasta la vista. I couldn't believe that Carmesita had told us the whole truth. Red agreed, and the ride to Rancho Diablo might prove to be a wild goose chase. I decided first I would talk with the local commandant of the Rurales. In the meantime, Red would keep an eye on the cantina. to Chihuahua, any place where it is safe, but not here. What if Corporal Gonzalez of the Rurale should see you? I cannot stay longer at the Rancho de Alto, and I cannot run away. If the Rurales do not find me, those gringos will. Those gringos are gone, Manuel. Get out, you! Just what right you have to come in here? Just a minute, Carmen Chita. All we wanted was to talk to Manuel. I guess you heard us asking about you, Manuel. I heard everything. Then you know we're here because of your mother. But that ain't why we're here, Manuel. Fat boy's gun and see if he's got a knife. Oh, no, you cannot take Get him! Get away from that gun! All right, let's go. Where are we going? Not far enough to tire you out. My visit to the Rurales paid off. From Corporal Gonzalez, I learned that Manuel had worked for a local merchant named Leif Seabury, who was found stabbed to death on the morning after Manuel disappeared. The corporal was positive that Manuel had committed the crime especially when it was discovered the Seabury had been robbed of 300 pesos. Are you sure you saw Manuel with the knife just before the man closed the store for the night? Si, senor Cassidy. When I stepped into the store, Manuel was holding a knife which he wanted to buy. It had a carved bone handle and a fine blade with engraving all over it. And you found the knife later? No, no, no. No knife, no pesos, no Manuel. All gone. Well, then somebody else could have done it with another knife. Then why Manuel run away? Oh, well, his running away doesn't necessarily prove that he's guilty. It's possible, senor. If you want to, you can search for him. But if you find him, you tell me, eh, senor? I sure will. Muchas gracias. Hasta la vista. Hasta luego. Manuel was here. Oh, please, senor, try to find him in the hills up there. I'll see what I can do. Oh, gracias. it looked to Red as if he and Manuel had come to the end of the trail. Then Andrews caught sight of me.
to hang on to that boy. Oh, they had me all tied up. I couldn't do anything. He went on up the other way. I'll go after him. No, wait. Well, let me loose. Hey, let me loose. Come on, get me loose. Manuel was badly scared and stubbornly refused to talk. I tried to appeal to his devotion to his mother. It was no go. I decided in the time it would take to get him back to Rio Hermosa, he might calm down enough to answer questions. Well, but they were after him, too. Who's they? Hurry up and get the shoulder fixed, will you? Take it easy. A couple of Americans. Did they get him? I don't know. Last we saw him, he was hightailing it for the hills. And you didn't go after him? Listen, that hombre can put a bullet in a centavo at 50 yards. Besides, Andy here's in pretty bad shape. Take a look. Now, that ain't so bad. But losing the Mexican is. If you two had listened to me, this wouldn't have happened. I wanted to put a bullet in him right away, but no. Now we're chasing around him like a bunch of scared coyotes, and for what? A lousy 300 pesos. What do you mean, 300 pesos? With a 1,000 pesos reward for the capture of the killer, dead or alive, all we had to do was to knock him off, take him to the rurales, and collect. So now Manuel gets to the rurales first. When Blackie gets you fixed up, him and me will ride out and find Manuel. And when we do, we won't waste any time. You know you're not helping yourself by withholding the facts, Manuel. I have the facts, Senor Cassidy. I entered the place a few minutes before they closed for the night. Soledad had the knife in his hand. Yeah, 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 we know all about that. The knife had a bone handle and was engraved on the blade. But did you see Manuel stab him? What more do I need, Senor Rojo? I was there. He had the knife in his hand. I saw it. The man was stabbed to death and robbed of 300 pesos. Are you such a fool you cannot speak? Or are you too much of a coward to fight for yourself? Even a worm tries to crawl out of the hand. Come and see this right, Manuel. I want to help you. But you must tell the truth about what happened. Poppy thinks you're innocent. That's why he brought you back, so you could prove it. I did not believe it when you told me this, Senor Cassidy. I made a mistake, I think. I can understand. And I can't say that I blame you. So, talk. This is a waste of time. Vamonos! Un momento, por favor. This is what happened at the store. The truth, amigo. Manuel recounted the story of what happened on the night Leif Seabury was murdered. After Corporal Gonzalez had left, Manuel was about to bolt the front door when Pointer and the Andrews pushed their way in and demanded the money out of the strong box. The day's receipts, 300 pesos. When Seabury did not move rapidly enough, Pointer seized the knife, which still lay on the counter, and stabbed him to death. Fearing for his life, Manuel tried to slip out to run to the rurales for help. Pointer, however, caught him and wanted to kill him on the spot, but Andrews insisted they take him along with them. And where'd they take you? To the Rancho Diablo. Why did they take you along? To make Corporal Gonzalez think he ran away because he was guilty. And you escaped from this ranch? I heard the one they called Blackie say there is a reward of a thousand pesos, dead or alive. I was afraid they would kill me and deliver my body to the Ruales. So I ran away. I did not know which way to turn. So I came here to the cantina. And uh, where's the knife? 
The knife, the strong box, everything is there at the Rancho Diablo. We better take a ride out there. I agree with you, Senor Cassidy. But first, I think I better lock up uh, Soledad in the castle. You know, Senor? A bird in the hand? Yeah. Now, if you don't mind, Red and I'll go ahead. You come out as soon as you can. See, si, Senor. And don't worry, you won't be in jail long. Muchas gracias. More dilapidated, run-down outfit than the Rancho Diablo we had never seen. Only one horse was in evidence, and as Manuel had told us that only the three men were hiding out there, Red and I assumed we had to reckon with the man whom I had wounded earlier in the day. Again, Migo. Hey, that ain't bad Spanish for a beginner, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Not bad, but I wouldn't say it was good. Come on. <laughs> if not for you, amigos, my muchacho might now be dead. Verdad, Manuel? See, si, Madre Mia. And they have made it possible for you soon to see again. ¿Qué has dicho? What is this paper? A bank draft. For 1,000 pesos, it is the reward for the capture of those murderers. Mil pesos. Gracias. Goodbye, senor. Goodbye. Hasta la vista. Adios, amigo. Adiós. 
sidekick a man ever had, but in his efforts to be helpful, he can get himself into deals a Philadelphia lawyer couldn't straighten out. Hello, Miss Mayo. Hello. How are things going? We've been busy. Music to my ears. My partner in? Yes, Mr. Rivers is inside. Thank you. Everything all right? Listen, when I take care of anything, I do it right. Slim sticking the telegram over to the bank now. Excellent, excellent. By the time that hick banker learns the truth, we'll have our pile and be far, far away. I feel that this is going to be more productive than our last effort. Mr. Mayor says you were busy while I was gone. That's right. Just cast your eyes on that. 100 acres, $1,000. Up along Cassidy. Where have I heard that name before? But Cassidy's a local bigwig. Being able to say he's one of our buyers will sell more land than all the high presser salesmanship we could use. Good. What's he look like? Oh, I don't know. His man, Red Connors, made the deal for him. <laughs> that Connors is a dumb squirrel if I ever saw one. <laughs> what a difference that make to us. We've got Cassidy's money and his name on our contract. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. Here, yeah, help yourself. Help yourself. You better wait over there. gentleman to see you. Well, how do you do, sir? How do you do, sir? 
I'd like to find out about this land you gentlemen are selling. Glad to tell you the whole story, my friend. <laughs> my name is Rivers, and this is Mr. Dale, my associate. How do you do, sir? Have a seat. Thank you. I feel sure that, uh, that you feel like making a substantial investment, providing we can show you how you can make 500% profit in six months. Before we go into that, I'd like to hear your proposition. Why, it's the greatest opportunity offered to smart businessmen like yourself, west of the Mississippi. And let me tell you something, my friend. Hopalong Cassidy bought some of the land. Is that so? Well, this is beginning to sound very interesting. I'll give you the facts, my friend. You can draw your own conclusions. Rivers glibly explained that they had obtained title to thousands of acres of government land land on which only sagebrush and mesquite now grew, but which would soon become a fertile valley, a virtual promised land. According to Dale, the engineer, this was to be brought about by digging an enormous irrigation ditch from Harcher's Canyon, 50 miles away. The longer their sales talk continued, the more I was convinced my fears were well-founded. Red had bought worthless land for my hard-earned money. What worried me most was knowing that these high-pressure confidence men were using my name to sell unsuspecting friends. And now that you realize what a great opportunity this is, how much would you like to invest? Oh, I'm afraid you jumped to the wrong conclusion. Uh, how so? I didn't say I wanted to invest in your proposition. You couldn't be making any mistake. No, sir. Now, take Hopalong Cassidy, for instance. What about Hopalong Cassidy? He has invested $1,000. He realizes what a fine opportunity it is. You know him, of course. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> I'm Hopalong Cassidy. <laughs> well, I, I certainly am happy to meet you, Mr. Cassidy. <laughs> Since you're an investor and you know exactly what we're trying to do, you'll be glad to lend your support. That depends on what I see. You say you're digging an irrigation ditch? Oh, yes, yes. We're working on it right now. Where? East of town. I think I'll ride out and have a look at that. Uh, <coughs> that's a quite little trip, Mr. Cassidy. Oh, that's uh, all right. I need the exercise. Uh, well, I'll ride out with you. I have to go out there anyway. Just give me a moment to leave these papers with our secretary, Miss Mayo. Sure. <laughs> File these, please. Well, goodbye, sir. No, no, no. Sit down. We'll have a little chat. No, okay. I think we've had quite a chat. You will excuse me, please. You fellas know anything about Hopalong Cassidy? I'll say we do. He's the sheriff of this county and a bad hombre to tangle with. Doing on the ditch. Well, let him look. Boys are out there. No. You better take a run out, Slim. I want him to look busy when we get there. Sure, I'll make it look good. I wondered what had become a red who was supposed to have waited for me outside. I hoped he wasn't buying more land. Dale began to offer excuses why the work we were about to see hadn't progressed farther. Pending a bank loan, which they were negotiating today, they had only begun a preliminary survey. From now on, work would progress at full speed. I could tell he was uneasy. He seemed to sense I knew what he was up to. Boss is bringing somebody out. Get busy.
Red explained what he had seen, and it sounded more like an excuse than an accusation. Slim alibied he had seen Red acting suspicious and had gone after him to find out why. Dale raged because the surveyors slept when they should have been hard at work. When I had seen, I knew that the surveyors were a phony setup. I could tell, too, that Red was beginning to realize he had made a bad investment. What have you guys been doing? I expect you to be another mile up the line. See you later. Right. We headed back toward Twin Rivers. From now on, you better keep on your toes. Wait out here. I'll be out in a minute. Hi, Mr. Todd. Oh, what can I do for you, Mr. Cassidy? Did uh, Rivers and Dale borrow some money from your bank? I'm sorry, but that's personal business. I realize that. But I'm asking as the sheriff. In that case, yes. They borrowed $5,000 to start digging the irrigation ditch, but it was well secured. By what? They deposited a check for $15,000 on a Chicago bank. Of course, we only took the check for collection. But this morning, we got back a telegram saying that it had cleared. Mm-hmm. Uh, may I see the telegram? Yes. But why should they wire instead of sending the money in the usual way? I asked them to. Rivers and Dale needed the loan. As soon as I received confirmation, I deposited the money to their account. I see. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Todd. Glad to accommodate. Any time. Frankly, I'm worried about Cassidy nosing around the way he's doing. Uh, we can clean up 15, maybe 20,000 a couple of weeks, but we've got to get him off our necks. If he gets in our way, it'll be his tough luck. Uh, by the way, what you do with that fellow you were waiting for this morning? We left him. What, right there? Sure. Why, I'm surprised, Frank. That's dangerous. You know that. Now, you better send the boys out right away and dispose of him. OK. It'll make you feel any easier. As Red and I headed toward the bar 20, I kept thinking about that telegram from the Chicago bank. Maybe it was because we had just passed the spot where the road cuts over the hills to Bruxton, where the telegraph office is located. Anyhow, I couldn't understand why Rivers and Dale were in such a hurry they couldn't wait for their check to clear in the usual way. I decided to forget, then... The man had been shot through the head. He looked vaguely familiar. We began to look for identification.
body had been identified as that of Joe Benson, the telegraph operator from Bruxton. He left a wife and four kids, who would now be the real victims of the brutal killing. I figured the murder had to tie in with the telegram from Chicago to the Twin Rivers Bank. I asked Red to ride to Bruxton and find out more about that telegram. He couldn't get back before dark, so I told him to meet me outside the office of Rivers and Dale. While waiting for Red to return from Bruxton, I searched the office of Rivers and Dale. I didn't know what it was I hoped to find, but there had to be something. There were two bank deposit books on St. Louis banks and under the names of Riverton and Lindale. Somewhere in the office, I knew there must be a list of others who had put their hard-earned money into the swindle. Put up your hands, Mr. Cassidy. Miss Mayo, I have found myself in less embarrassing situations. If the subject isn't too painful, maybe you'll explain why you broke in here. I'll be glad to discuss the whole messy business with you if you'll handle with that. No, job. we'll talk as we are. May I put my hands down? No. What is it? Now, we can discuss this a little more comfortably. Now, what do you know about this land development company? Only what passes across my desk. But you must know that they're selling land they don't own to put in an irrigation ditch they have no intention of digging. Are they? Aren't they? Well, this whole thing smacks of grand larceny. You seem quite sure of that. Of that and other things, including murder. Murder? That's right. Now, I feel pretty sure you're not involved. So you won't mind answering a few questions about Rivers and Dale, will you? Mr. Cassidy, even if I wanted to, which I don't, I'm in no position to betray my employer's confidences. <laughs> I was pretty sure that'd be your answer. Hobby? Yes? Good evening, ma'am. Didn't expect to find you in here, but I didn't see you outside like you said. The door was open, so I just walked in. Did you find out anything? I sure did. Good. Wait outside a couple of minutes. I'll be right out. Check for 15,000 refused. Signors Arnold Rivers and Frank Dale not known here. Brush National Bank, J.D. Barton, cashier. Gosh, Hoppy, I'm sorry I got us into this. Oh, it'll probably be all right. At least we can save some of our friends from being cheated. I sure was surprised when you left that secretary go last night. Oh, she's only an employee, Red. She probably doesn't even know what they're doing in that thing. I wouldn't be too sure about that. You know how women are. No, how are women? Oh, now, you know I don't know nothing about women. Where are we headed for now? To the bank. I'm going to tie up Rivers and Dale's account, then I'm going to put them under arrest. What makes you think they're the killers? Well, everything points to them, doesn't it? Let's go. Come in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. There's something I think you ought to know. Uh, you look as if it was serious. It is. Hop along, Cassidy searched this office last night. What's that? How do you know? I came back. I forgot my gloves. Well, go on, go on. What about Cassidy? I think he was looking for something concerning the bank. Yes, well, we have nothing to worry about. No, no. <laughs> we'll check on that later. Yes, indeed. Well, thank you, Miss Mayo. Just the same. Very well. Now, look, Arnold. Let's not take any more chances. We've got almost 9,000 in that bank, including the loan. Let's draw it out. Keep it here in this safe where we can get our hands on the hurry if we need to. Yeah, that's right, Frank. Bank's open now. I'll write a check. You take it over and cash it. No trouble, huh? No. The cashier didn't like our drawing out all but $100, but here it is. <laughs> Miss Mayo, a couple of minutes. Well, 
1893. What do you mean, breaking in on us like this, Mr. Cassidy? You're under arrest. On what grounds? Embezzlement, forgery, and murder. Why, you tin badge yokel. As I was saying, you're under arrest. You've gone a little too far. I hope you know that, Cassidy. We'll let the court decide that. Come on, get on your feet. Get out of here. Hold it. Keep him covered, Red. Miss Mayo, so far you're in the clear on this thing. But I want you to wait here until I get back. There are a few things I want you to straighten up for me. I'll find something to do while I'm waiting. Thank you. Come on, let's go. That's the dame that works for the boss. Yeah, and it looks like she's carrying that satchel the boss brought out of the bank a while ago. You reckon they're trying to run out on us? I don't know, but we're sure going to find out right now. I didn't know whether those men had seen us or not, but it didn't matter. They were working for Rivers and Dale, and I wanted them for murder. Cover it, Red. Get on your horses. Come on, Miss Mayo. Well, from what this paper says, I can't say that I blame you for trying to get back the money that uh, Rivers and Dale swindled from you and your friends. But there's one thing that's bothering me. Why didn't you cooperate with me from the very beginning? I got panicky. I didn't think. That's the trouble. Folks just don't think. If they did, they'd be careful what kind of schemes they put their hard-earned dollars into. Isn't that the truth? Well, it's all here. Looks like the folks will get back most of the money they invested. Oh, that's fine. Well, young lady, you're free to go home. Have your sheriff get in touch with me, and I'll send the bank book to him, and he can go about distributing the money. Thanks ever so much. I can never repay you. You're Goodbye. very welcome. Bye. Bye. Here you are, Mr. Cassidy. Thank you, Mr. Todd. Red, the bank is next door. Do you think you could get over there with this without uh, finding another scheme to invest in? Or should I let Mr. Todd take it over? Oh, Harvey. Mr. Todd, will you deposit that to my account, please? Very well. Thank you very much. Yes. Come on. Bye, gentlemen. Goodbye, sir. Hop along Cassidy, hop along Cassidy, he'll return soon again, there's no 
used to say goodbye until then.